Space, the final frontier. Humans have long been fascinated by the idea of space travel, the idea of exploring unknown worlds and new frontiers. And our media has reflected this fascination for decades, from Jules Verne to Star Trek and Star Wars. In the real world, we have sent people to orbit the Earth and to land on the moon, as well as send rovers and probes to different planets and the outer reaches of our solar system. But outside of science fiction, we've always run into a problem that I'm not sure we're ever going to be able to solve. Speed. It takes about three days to reach the moon with a spacecraft, and would take about seven months for humans to reach Mars with our current technology. So you can imagine, distant space travel is really not possible with today's tech. This is so different than the faster than light travel shown in movies and TV shows. We don't have the technology to get a spacecraft anywhere near the speed of light, let alone faster than it, if such a thing is even possible. There's a bunch of issues that prevent us from being able to just spin up the warp drive and instantly fling our spacecraft from one galaxy to another. But I'm going to leave the super complicated reasons why we can't travel that fast to the physicists. And I'm actually just going to totally ignore all of those physics issues and effects that would stop a spacecraft from achieving faster than light travel. And I'm just going to talk about a much simpler physics problem, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is simply the energy that an object in motion has. The amount of kinetic energy that an object has depends both on the mass and speed of the object. In order to get an object to move, you have to put energy into it. If you want it to move fast, you need to put a lot of energy into it. The amount of energy needed to accelerate a large spacecraft is astonishing. Imagine we have a space shuttle out in the middle of space. No planets or stars nearby to add strong gravitational force to the situation, and we just want to accelerate that 99,318 kg space shuttle from a stop to the speed that the Apollo 11 orbiter was traveling when it started its trip to the moon. About 24,200 miles per hour, or 10,800 meters per second. We would need to give it 5.792 trillion joules of kinetic energy, this is the energy equivalent of nearly 1400 tons of TNT. What about going faster than light? How much energy would it take for us to get that space shuttle moving at, say, just 1.05 times the speed of light? Let's throw these numbers into our equation here. Same way to the space shuttle, and the speed is now 314,782,081 meters per second. So you would need 4.92 billion terajoules to achieve this speed. Us humans use about 580 million terajoules of energy per year total. So the amount of energy needed to get the space shuttle to 1.05 times the speed of light would power all of humans' energy use for about 8.5 years. And 1.05 times the speed of light is really not that fast when it comes to the need to traverse the huge distances between planets and galaxies. It would take about four years to reach the nearest solar system at that speed, and about 23,800 years to reach the nearest galaxy, Canis Major, which is about 25,000 light years away. If we want to bring those travel times down a bit by going even faster, we're going to need more energy. Check out this table I made. This is the amount of kinetic energy needed to achieve different speeds. So to go 5 times the speed of light, the space shuttle would require 110 billion terajoules of energy. This would power all humans' current energy usage for 192 years. And even at this speed, it would take 10 months to reach the nearest solar system, and 5,000 years to reach the nearest galaxy. The amount of energy required increases a huge amount with every jump in speed. This is because the velocity component in the equation for kinetic energy is squared. Even if we could put the enormous amount of energy required to reach speeds like 5 times the speed of light, it still doesn't really get us very far in the universe with distances so huge. Okay, well, what if we just give up on the idea of human space travel faster than light and just focus on getting a small satellite to these speeds? Let's say we just want to use a tiny satellite, the weight of an apple, about 150 grams or 0.15 kilograms. To get this apple-sized satellite up to 1.05 times the speed of light, 
it would take just 6,740 terajoules of energy. This is way less than the amount required for the space shuttle-sized spacecraft. Much less than a year's worth of energy for all humans, but still equivalent to 450 Hiroshima-sized nuclear bombs worth of energy. So, yeah, it's pretty much impossible for us to achieve. Let's say we wanted to just totally go crazy and bring our Apple Weight satellite to the nearest galaxy 25,000 light years away in just a year. Well, that would take about 7,260 years of energy at our current usage to do it. Now, the elephant in the room of all this talk, besides all the physics related issues that make this impossible, is that all this energy we've been putting into our space shuttle and our Apple satellite only bring the objects up to the speed we wanted. We would also need to use energy to reverse accelerate, aka break, and slow the objects back down into an orbit around whatever target we're aiming at which would require a huge amount of energy to do as well on top of the energy we use to get the object to the speed in the first place. So yeah, distant space travel has a speed problem, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that we'll never solve it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, I really liked making this one, it was a lot of fun. I hope you catch the next ones coming up, and while you're here why don't you check out the other two videos that I have linked here for some more interesting topics.